Solana can handle over 60,000 transactions per second. Faster than Visa. Faster than Ethereum. Faster than almost every blockchain on Earth. But how is that even possible? And what trade-offs does it make to get there? Today, I'll explain what Solana is and how it differs from Ethereum and Bitcoin. By the end, you'll know whether that speed actually matters. Let's start with the big picture. Every blockchain, no matter how fancy, tries to do three things at once. Stay secure, stay decentralized, and stay fast. The problem is, you can usually only have two. Bitcoin is incredibly secure and decentralized, but slow. Ethereum is more flexible and programmable, but still struggles with speed. And Solana? It tries to break that rule entirely. By being fast and scalable, even if it has to bend the rules on decentralization to do it. To see how they differ, let's start with Bitcoin, the original. Bitcoin is like the first subway line in a city. It's reliable, predictable, and built for one purpose, to move value from one place to another without needing a bank. Every transaction follows the same fixed schedule. It's not fast, but it's consistent. Bitcoin works through something called proof of work. Imagine thousands of computers racing to solve the same giant math puzzle. The first one to solve it gets to add the next page to Bitcoin's public ledger, the blockchain. That ledger is public, permanent, and shared worldwide. Once a page is added, it can't be erased. That's what gives Bitcoin its trustless design. No one owns the ledger, yet everyone agrees on what it says. Brilliant but expensive. Proof of work is slow and energy hungry. Now let's look at Ethereum. Ethereum took Bitcoin's idea and asked, what if money could think? Instead of just transferring value, Ethereum introduced smart contracts. Think of a vending machine. You put in a dollar and press a button, and it gives you a soda. No human approval, just code. That innovation turned the blockchain into a programmable platform for decentralized apps, DeFi, NFTs, games, and more. But all that activity made Ethereum crowded. Every transaction competes for space in the next block. And because Ethereum prioritizes security and decentralization, it sacrifices speed. Even after switching from proof of work to proof of stake, far more energy efficient, it still averages around 15 to 20 transactions per second. That's where Solana enters. Solana's creators looked at that bottleneck and said, we can do better. They wanted a blockchain that could handle global scale financial activity without the slowdowns. Solana still uses proof of stake like modern Ethereum, but adds something unique proof of history. So what exactly is proof of history? Most blockchains rely on all participants agreeing on what happened and in what order. Solana's trick is to timestamp every transaction before processing it. Imagine a busy restaurant. In most kitchens, cooks have to shout, who's next, before serving orders. Solana's kitchen works differently. Every order arrives already labeled with the exact time it was placed. The cooks just look at the timestamps and work in order. That's proof of history. It creates a shared timeline everyone can trust without constant back and forth. But proof of history isn't magic. It's cryptography. It uses a verifiable delay function, a hash chain that proves time has passed. Each validator runs the same sequential hashing function. Because the hashes must be computed in order, they form a verifiable clock that can't be faked or sped up. It's similar to how GPS satellites timestamp signals, letting your phone triangulate its position without the satellites talking. Net effect? Ordering is baked in. This design slashes consensus latency and keeps fees under a penny. That's how Solana reaches Visa-level throughput while other blockchains stall in traffic. But speed always comes with trade-offs. Solana's efficiency depends on powerful hardware. To run a validator node, you need a high-end server with big RAM, fast storage, and high bandwidth internet. That barrier to entry shrinks participation. Around 2,000 validators versus Ethereum's hundreds of thousands and Bitcoin's tens of thousands, making coordination fast but increasing concentration risk. Running a Solana validator isn't cheap. You need a high-end server with at least 256 gigabytes of RAM, 2 terabytes of NVMe storage, and a 1 gigabit per second internet connection. That's around $5,000 to $10,000 upfront for hardware, plus $300 to $500 monthly in hosting costs. Compare that to running a Bitcoin node, which works on a $300 Raspberry Pi with basic internet, or Ethereum post-merge, which runs on consumer-grade hardware. Solana's requirements create a real barrier to entry. Only about 2,000 validators currently secure the network. Ethereum has over 900,000. Bitcoin has tens of thousands of full nodes. That concentration matters. 
if a handful of large hosting providers, AWS, Google Cloud, Hetzner, experience outages, or worse, collude, the network becomes vulnerable. Speed requires computational power. Power requires money. Money concentrates control. It's not ideology, it's economics. Bitcoin is a slow but unstoppable convoy of trucks. Anyone with a basic rig can join. Solana is a fleet of Formula One cars, lightning fast, but only a handful of drivers can handle the wheel. The network speed is breathtaking, but critics argue it risks putting too much control in too few hands. And then there's reliability. Solana's high-speed design has caused a few headline outages. The most infamous came in September 2021, when a bot-driven NFT mint flooded the chain with over 400,000 transactions per second. Dados disagreed on state. The network froze for 17 hours until a manual restart. Shorter incidents followed in 2022, though stability has improved since. The September 2021 incident revealed Solana's Achilles heel. When the network froze, developers had to coordinate a manual restart across all validators, exactly the kind of centralized intervention crypto was designed to eliminate. The problem wasn't a bug in the code, it was the architecture itself. Solana's design optimizes for speed by allowing validators to process transactions before full consensus. When transaction volume spikes beyond capacity, validators can diverge on the network state. Bitcoin and Ethereum handle this differently. They slow down and get expensive, but they keep running. Solana's approach is all or nothing. The network processes at blazing speed until it can't, and then it stops completely. Subsequent outages in January 2022, lasting seven hours, and May 2022, lasting four and a half hours, followed similar patterns. Each time, the Solana Labs team rolled out patches, better load balancing, improved forking resolution, transaction prioritization. The fixes worked. Major outages have become rarer, but the fundamental trade-off remains. You can't have Formula One speed with Toyota reliability. Still, Solana has carved out a real niche. Its performance makes it ideal for apps needing high-volume activity, gaming, decentralized exchanges, and NFT markets where milliseconds matter. Here's where Solana's speed shows real-world value. On Ethereum, DeFi trades can cost $50 to $200 in gas fees during peaks. On Solana, they cost fractions of a cent. In gaming, titles like Star Atlas and Aurori rely on thousands of cheap, rapid transactions per session. Ethereum's gas fees would make that impossible. Solana's subcent fees turn those microactions into a smooth, almost invisible user experience. The kind blockchain needs to feel mainstream. Ask developers who've built on both chains, and the response is stark. On Ethereum, deploying a smart contract can cost $500 to $5,000 in gas fees during network congestion. Testing on mainnet is prohibitively expensive, so developers rely on testnets that don't replicate real-world conditions. On Solana, deployment costs dollars. Testing in production becomes viable. That difference fundamentally changes how teams build. Ethereum developers optimize obsessively to minimize gas usage, sometimes sacrificing features or user experience. Solana developers focus on functionality first, costs second. The result is different design philosophies. Ethereum apps tend to be lean and gas efficient. Solana apps tend to be feature rich and interactive. Neither approach is wrong, they're optimized for different constraints. But for teams trying to build consumer-facing applications that feel as smooth as Web2, Solana's cost structure removes friction that kills experimentation on Ethereum. Let's talk numbers for perspective. Bitcoin handles about seven transactions per second. Ethereum, roughly 20. Solana, in theory, up to 65,000. And in practice, a few thousand, still orders of magnitude faster. That makes Solana feel less like a traditional blockchain and more like a high-frequency trading network built for throughput from day one. So what's really happening under the hood? Solana uses a hybrid consensus. Proof of stake selects validators, skin in the game, while proof of history provides the clock, ordering events without global chatter. Together, they achieve finality the point where a transaction is irreversible, within seconds. On Ethereum, that can take minutes. On Bitcoin, nearly an hour. For developers building anything interactive, that's a game changer. Ethereum's slower pace and vast validator network deliver stronger decentralization and security. Solana's smaller validator set enables blazing speed, but leaves less margin for error. It's a classic trade-off between resilience and performance. Despite its youth, Solana's ecosystem is thriving. It hosts NFT marketplaces, DeFi platforms, and projects like Helium and Stepin, 
that migrated from other chains for lower fees and higher throughput. Developers love it because it's cheap to experiment. Failures don't cost $50 per transaction. Meanwhile, Ethereum still dominates in developer count and security guarantees, and Bitcoin remains the king of simple, immutable value storage. It's not about one being better than another. They fill different roles. Bitcoin stores value. Ethereum runs programs. Solana optimizes for speed. Still, Solana isn't invincible. Its dependence on specialized hardware and a smaller validator base means it faces the same centralization questions Ethereum once did. But technology evolves. Ethereum is scaling with Layer 2 solutions like Arbitrum and Optimism, while Solana keeps pushing on-chain performance. Both aim for the same goal, a blockchain experience as smooth as using the internet. Let's recap. Bitcoin is the foundation, the secure decentralized ledger that started it all. Ethereum is the next layer, the programmable, flexible world computer. Solana is the speed layer, the experimental network proving that maybe, just maybe, blockchains can move as fast. Each chain solved a different problem. Bitcoin fixed trust, Ethereum fixed programmability, and Solana is trying to fix performance. Whether it's the future or just a stepping stone, it's already changed how we think about what a blockchain can be. So, what do you think? Is Solana's speed the future of crypto? Or a dangerous shortcut? Drop your take below whether your team's speed is everything or team decentralization or death.